this COVID time. Let's begin our worship service this morning then by standing and singing our opening hymn. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, 
will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We kneel or sit for confession. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We stand to sing God's praise. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you. God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, you granted your prophets strength to resist the temptations of the devil and courage to proclaim repentance. Give us pure hearts and minds to follow your Son faithfully, even into suffering and death, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading for today is from Amos, chapter 7. This is what he showed me. Behold, the Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, behold. I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never pa again pass by them. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste, and I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to Jeroboam, the king of Israel, saying, Amos, has conspired against you in the midst of the house of Israel. The, the land is not able to bear all his words, for thus Amos has said, 
Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah, and eat bread there, and prophesy there. But never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary. It is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet nor a prophet's son, but I was a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore figs. But the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading comes from Ephesians chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined for us adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespass, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven, and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works things according to the counsel, counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it, to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel as we sing the verse. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. King Herod heard of it, for Jesus' name had become known. Some said, John the Baptist has been raised from the dead. That is why these miraculous powers are at work in him. But others said, he is Elijah. And others said, he is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For it was Herod who had sent and seized John and bound him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because he had married her. For John had been saying to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to put him to death, but she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he kept him safe. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he heard him gladly. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his nobles and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. For when Herodias' daughter came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it to you. And he bowed to her. Whatever you ask me, I will give you up to half of my kingdom. And she went out and said to her mother, For what should I ask? And she said, The head of John the Baptist. 
And she came in immediately with haste to the king and asked, saying, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And the king was exceedingly sorry. But because of his oaths and his guests, he did not want to break his word to her. And immediately the king sent an executioner with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison and brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. And the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard of it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our worship service continues by singing the hymn of the day. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, you have blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm. We have your Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for our sin. Help us always to cling to him and know that we are saved eternally through faith in him. And we pray this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Please be seated. It's hard to feel blessed when you're living in a world of pandemic that has disrupted our normal life. But remember, life in the early church was no picnic either. So why is Paul so ecstatic about the blessings that he has? Does he know something that we do not? In verse 1 of the epistle lesson, or the third verse of the epistle lesson, the first one read, 
Paul mentions the word blessed or a form of it three times. And it doesn't take a biblical scholar then to know that that word probably gives us a clue of what's coming in the readings there that follow. But reading verses 4 to 14 can be a daunting task if we're trying to enumerate the blessings. I mean, it would be like uh, trying to find all the squares in one of those Facebook puzzles, you know, th that has the large square and squares within squares, squares linking with other square squares, encompassing other squares. It takes a person who is spatially gifted and very perceptive to find all those squares. That's what Ephesians 1, 3 to 14 is like. You come upon one blessing only to find another one, like Russian nesting dolls. So, here's what we're going to do this morning. I'm going to have you read verses 4 to 14 with me. You can either read them up here on the big screen, or you can use the Bible in front of you, or those online, you can get your own Bible as long as it's an English Standard Version, because that's what's up there. Or, and we're going to read, and I want you to count the blessings and see how many blessings you come up with. Are you ready to count? Let's read. Even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. Okay, how many blessings did you count in these verses, these 10 verses here? 12? Anyone? 18? I've had people say as many as 20 that they've counted in these verses. But no matter what count you got, we all caught the big ones, right? The big ones as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. He predestined us for the adoption. We have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. We have obtained an inheritance. We were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. But here's a thought. What if blessings are not meant to be counted, but lived in? I mean, on the face of it, it's kind of absurd to say, let's count your blessings. I mean, that would be like saying, okay, let's go to the beach and count the grain of sands on the beach or the number of hair on your head. But that's what we humans do, right? We keep track of things. We count things. I mean, we not only count our blessings, but we probably count our neighbor's blessings more closely than we do our own. We count our successes and failures. We count our insults and awards. We count the good things and the bad things. We're like an accountant, right? We want a balance statement. We want a P&L statement to know how we're doing in this experience that we call life. But today we might not feel so blessed. 2020 and 2021 have not been easy on people. That three-headed ogre of 
politics, pandemic, and mainstream media is like a fire-breathing monster that has kept our country on edge for a long time. And people are at their wit's end and dealing with the strain of it all. And yet, Paul says, we are blessed. Counting blessings is so 1950s, so retro and nostalgic. We would say, yeah, we used to feel blessed, but as B.B. King says, sings, the thrill is gone. Why? What happened? Ephesians 1, our epistle lesson for today, is a good attitude adjustment for us Christians. We know the listings that Paul has, list, has already talked about, but he tells us we are blessed no matter what. And before we get into those blessings, let's take just a moment to look at that word blessing to begin with. Blessing can be both a noun and a verb, right? As a noun, we would say such thing as she is a blessing. He said a blessing before dinner. Dad gave our marriage his blessing. We have received so many blessings. Nouns are easy to count, to quantify. Verbs denote actions. And as a verb, we might say the pastor blessed the couple and sent them on their way. Or in our text today, God has blessed us in Christ Jesus. Verbs being action words are not so easily quantified. But the point is, a blessing can be both something you do and something you receive. You can receive blessings and you can be a blessing or you can bless other people. And broadly speaking, a blessing is sort of like a, um, you know, a prayer to God for providence and protection for care and, and comfort for you. It can be, you know, for benefits or those good things that make one happy in life. In the Old Testament, blessings were usually of the material sort that are listed, you know, such as uh, possessions, good crops, good health, long life. When God blessed Job after all the horrifying events that he went through, the Bible reads that the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. And he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, a, yo a thousand yoke of oxen, and a thousand donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. In all the land there were no women so beautiful as Job's daughters. After this, Job lived for 140 years, and Job died old and full of days. Most of us are probably more familiar with the blessing that Aaron proclaimed, pronounced over the congregation of Israel. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the New Testament, blessings are more of the spiritual benefits type. And that's what our text is about. But there are other blessings in Scripture as well, like in James chapter 1, right? Where James says that blessed are those who endure temptation, for they'll receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised those who remain faithful to him. But here in chapter 1 of Ephesians, we see blessings galore that God gives to his people. Paul is ecstatic that he is a blessed person, even while he is in prison. Yeah. He says, no matter the circumstances of life, we are still blessed people. So, how can we be joyful and hopeful even in the midst of the troubles of life? Because, as St. Paul says, he has chosen us in him before the foundation. He predestined us. He has redeemed us through his blood. And here's an interesting one. You and I have obtained an inheritance. <laughs> 
I wonder what that is, right? We'll get to find out one day. It's probably impossible to plumb the depth of all the blessings that Paul lists in these 10 verses. And there's no way to cover it in one sermon. But even just one of these blessings ought to change our mood and change the way we live our daily lives. I mean, take, for example, the blessing of forgiveness. This blessing really meets us where we live. I mean, who hasn't experienced the blessing of being forgiven? I mean, in our role as husband or father, uh, mother, wife, son, daughter, friend, neighbor, we've all had to have been forgiven, and we've experienced that blessing of being forgiven. How freeing and liberating it is when someone forgives you. We are blessed. And in the spiritual realm, it means that God no longer has an argument or a beef with you. God's cool. We're cool. All God's people are cool. We are blessed. But wait, there's more as the commercial goes. God not only has blessed us in the spiritual realm with every spiritual blessing, but now we get to be a blessing to others as well. We get to uplift others, share their burdens, brighten their day, bring them joy with the good news of God in Jesus Christ. To bless, to be a blessing is the verb form. And Christians try to live every day of their lives as a blessing to others around them. Since we have been blessed in the spiritual realm with every spiritual blessing, we get to share tangible, emotional, spiritual blessings with others. For example, people who are blessed do not curse, James 3. People who are blessed do not listen to complainers and naysayers, Psalm 1. People who are blessed do not feel entitled, they feel grateful. People who are blessed tend to pay their blessings forward. In other words, they are generous. People who are blessed are vividly aware of their blessedness and are humbled by it. People who are blessed see the sacred and holy in every aspect of their lives. That last one is particularly significant. Think about St. Paul, the Apostle Paul. He had an adventurous life, didn't he? Shipwrecked, beatings, floggings, imprisonment, false accusations, misunderstanding by his colleagues, sickness. We probably wouldn't consider those blessings, but Paul did. Because Paul considered himself blessed every day of his life. Not just some days, but every day of his life, no matter the circumstance. He lived and breathed in the blessing of God. That doesn't mean that everything in life is going to be joyful or particularly good for Paul or for us. But because of the gift of faith that we have in Jesus Christ given to us, we are blessed. Through Jesus Christ, we have been blessed in heaven with every spiritual blessing. And when our spirits feel blessed, our hearts are filled with joy. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses our human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us stand and make confession of this faith that we share with one another by speaking together the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we confess, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, we gather our tithes and offerings in worship for our Lord. We would ask that you would bring them forward, put them in the offering plates, and return to your pews down the center aisle. We also have a ministry minute at this time. Sandra, would you come forward and representing the LWML? She attended the, the international convention in Lexington, Kentucky the last week in June there, and so she has some words for us. In a little bit, you're going to see a video that uh, from Tanzania, and Pastor will explain part of it to you. But there was a, there's a clinic uh, in Maldui, the where we uh, where we were, and when we were in Tanzania in 2017, this clinic was more of a dream than a reality. It was basically just a cement slab. Then when we returned in 2019, they had the walls up, but it was all it was far from finished. It was suggested that we might apply for a grant to help finish the clinic. Our LWML had never done this before, but we asked Pastor Mike to do the application for the grant. And in 2020, the Kansas District LWML approved our grant for $5,200. This was enough to finish the clinic. We had a finished clinic and a doctor and a nurse that would staff it, except they needed equipment and medicine. We had our national LWML convention coming up in June of 2021, last month, in Lexington, Kentucky. So Pastor Mike wrote another grant and asked for $60,000. There were 65 grant proposals for this convention. 35 of them made it to the ballot, and 29 of those were funded. We were so excited that our $60,000 grant got enough votes to make it the number 12 grant to be funded. A lot of prayers went up before the grant. I was excited to be at the convention when the, the, it was announced that our grant would be paid. When there is a fifth Sunday in a month, we put out our big mite box. All the money that we collect on these Sundays go to pay for these grants. Our next big mite box Sunday will be in August. We ask that you save your coins, dollars, and we do accept checks made payable to Ascension LWML to help us pay for these grants. You can also leave donations with Cindy at the office. These are all very worthwhile causes. Our clinic will serve many, many people in that area who have no access to medical care. This is the first time that our LWML has submitted a grant proposal, and for it to be one of our national grants is such a blessing. I want to thank Pastor Mike for writing the two grants because it takes a lot of signatures to get this grant uh, approved in that. It has to go up the line in that. But anyway, thank you, Pastor Mike. It was very much appreciated. We're going to show you a video now of Madui Lutheran School in uh, Madui, Tanzania. And it's in Swahili, so you probably won't understand it. But Madui Lutheran School is probably is in the top five preparatory schools now in Tanzania. The closest medical facilities they had were over 20 kilometers away. And so having medical facilities for those students, which number, what, three to four hundred students that they have there, uh, and then serving the neighborhood is a really big outreach opportunity for that. So I'll let you listen to the, the um, video. It's in Swahili, so sorry about that, but I can't translate Swahili yet. <laughs> Is it going to play? Oops. Uh, it's not playing. Can you click on it, Doug? See if that'll make it play. Well, we'll get it for next, for next service then. But anyway, it would show the school, it shows the buildings there, and it shows that the clinic is finished as well. And I was going to point that out, where the clinic is uh, for the school. Um, but, you know, praise God, um, the LWML will fund this for $60,000, uh, 
12,000 over the next five years for medical equipment and for medicines. I, I mean, doctors got to have those things to properly care for people. So uh, we thank the LWML for their partnership in this ministry. So let's continue our worship service then by standing and going to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Especially we pray for Hannah Horning, for Charlotte Mandelik, for Pat Lindgren and Michelle Smith, the family of Reeve Zimmerman, Carla Bingenheimer's father, who passed away last week, for the family of Carol Walterbach, Karen Lungwitz's sister who died last week, and we also pray for the family of David Butterworth. We pray for Sean Baker, the son-in-law of Pastor and Deb Girdle, who will be ordained and installed this afternoon at Bethany Lutheran Church in Overland Park, Kansas. We pray. You have blessed us, O Father, in your beloved Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses. As you have sealed us with the promised Holy Spirit for an eternal inheritance in him, Bring us now in repentance and faith to receive your blessings with humility and joy, knowing that you alone are our Savior and provider. Lord, in your mercy, <clears throat> sustain the preachers you send, O Lord, especially Sean Baker, as he makes his vow to serve you by serving your people. Make him bold to proclaim your law against sin. And grant that your Holy Spirit would work powerfully in that word to humble the proud and bring them to repentance, that they would hear the gospel and receive the forgiveness of sins, won for them by Christ. Lord, in your mercy, you, O Lord, are king over all the earth. You bring ruin on wicked nations and their rulers and are no respecter of persons. Spare our nation and its leaders, O Lord. Let the conduct of your civil servants and of your people be wise, just, honorable, and in accord with your revealed will. Lord, in your mercy, emboldened by our adoption through Jesus Christ, O Father, we bring before you every need of body and soul. Lavish the riches of your grace on Hannah, Charlotte, Pat, and Michelle. Give comfort to the family of Reeve, Carol, and David. Lord, in your mercy, all these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord in trusting his promises, we are bold to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.